Let's imagine that we're given an angle of 30 degree with respect to the y-axis and a magnitude of 5 for a given vector called A. And I would like to figure out the component of A parallel to the x-axis, which means that I would like to figure out this component. which obviously is the one that we've been calculating all along and we know the answer the answer should be sine a sine of 30 but what we would like to do today is verify the same results using calculus so by definition in order to, for us to calculate the component of a parallel to the x-axis we will need to calculate the dot product with a and the unit vector along the x-axis times the unit vector again. So for us to be able to uh, use this formula, first we need the vector a in component notation. In our case, it will be 5 sine of 30 i plus 5 cosine of 30 j. The sine of 30 is 1 half, and the cosine of 30 is the square of 3 over 2. Okay, so we've done the first step. Now the second step is to obtain the unit vector along the x-axis. In this particular case, obviously the unit vector is nothing else than our i unit vector, which is 1 times i. Okay, so now we can just plug everything that we have. We will need to compute the dot product between A and I. So it will be 5 half I plus 5 square of 3 over 2 J dot I. And we will multiply this again by I. This dot product will give us 5 half because it will be 5 half times 1 plus 5 times square root of 3 over 2 times 0. And then we multiply it again by the i unit vector. So again, we have just reproduced uh, the result that we used to get from trigonometry, except this time we're using calculus and the dot product. Similarly, we could do the same thing, and we could shoot for... this component a perpendicular to the x-axis which is the same as a parallel to the y-axis so let's do this in two different ways first we notice that we have decomposed our vector a as a parallel along the x plus a perpendicular along the x. So we could obtain a perpendicular along the x by just solving for this factor, which would be a minus a parallel x. In this particular case, it would give us 5 half i plus 5 square root of 3 over 2 j minus what we've just obtained, 5 half i plus 0j. And this will give us 5 square root of 2j. So this is the easiest method to get a perpendicular. Unless we actually know the unit vector along the y-axis. And in this case, we would use the exact same formula. Except it will become a parallel to y is equal to a dot the unit vector, in this case it's j, times j. As we do this calculation, a dot j will give us <clears throat> 5 times square root of 3 over 2, times j again. 
Okay. If we would like to deduce the a perpendicular to x, we would just take the a vector minus the one we just obtained, which will give us five half i. Okay. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting and let's project this uh, vector a along a different direction. And let's pick a direction which say is 45 degree down. Let's call it L. So really, I'm looking for the component of A parallel to the direction L. In this case, it would be something like this. A parallel, and this one would be a perpendicular. Let's make some space. So we're going to use the exact same formula. Now we know A already. What we need to figure out is the unit vector along the direction L, which must be a unit vector in this direction. Or you could pick a unit vector in this direction. It shouldn't matter. As long as its unit is 1 and that the unit vector is a line along L. If you're given a direction defined as an angle, then uh, it's very easy to get the unit vector. All you have to do is imagine a circle of radius 1 intersecting your line. And obviously from trigonometry, this will give you square root of 2 over 2i, square root of 2 over 2j. In your case, the i is positive, the j is negative. So if we have this in this particular case, our a parallel to the L axis will be 5 half i plus 5 square root over 2 j dot our unit vector, square root 2 over 2 i minus square root 2 over 2 j. And we will multiply this again by our unit vector. As we calculate the dot product, we will need to multiply this term with this term, and this term with this term. So we'll end up with 5 square root of 2 over 4 minus 5 square root of 6 over 4. This again times our unit vector. At this point, we can do some algebra. We can factorize the 4. We can factorize 5, we can factorize 2, so we have 8, we can factorize square root of 2, and we end up with 1 minus square root of 3, i minus j. And I guess I'm forgetting square root of 2 here. Similarly, we can get the a perpendicular l by just taking the original vector a minus the one we've just obtained. So we could just take this vector minus this and we would get the a perpendicular. Okay, now if you are being asked to figure out the component of vector a along a direction and let's say you are given two points on that line, say point o, 0, 0, and point B, 4, 2. Then what you would like to do is, again, figure out the unit vector E prime along this direction. You know that E prime is parallel to position vector OB. Therefore, the first step that you want to do is calculate the position vector OB, which in this case would be 4i plus 2j. Then you would calculate the unit vector along OB, which by definition is the, the vector, the position vector itself divided by its magnitude. So the magnitude would be 4 squared, which is 16, plus 4, which is 20. And this unit vector 
is nothing else than R e prime. Therefore, if you would like the component of A parallel to the direction OB, we would just take the vector A dot E prime times E prime again. In the case, 5 half I plus 5 square of 3 over 2 J dot this unit vector, 4 square of 20 I plus 2 square of 20 J, which we multiply again by the unit vector. As we calculate the dot product, we will end up with a scalar. 4 times 5, that's 20. Divided by square of 20 will give us square of 20 divided by 2 plus 5 times 2, that's 10. Divided by 2, that's 5. Square of 3 divided by square of 20 and then times again the unit vector. And again at this point we can do the algebra, calculate the term independently. And we will have the component of A parallel to the direction OB. Similarly you can obtain the A perpendicular to this by taking the original vector A minus the parallel component. So there's really two particular cases that you might be facing. Either you're being given a direction which is given to you as the angle. In this case, it's very simple. All you have to do is take the cosine and the sine of this angle, making sure that you pick the appropriate sign in order to get the unit vector. If you're given a direction specified by two points within or along that direction, all you have to do is compute the position vector, deduce the unit vector, and you know that this unit vector is the same as the one you're looking for, and you can use that in a standard definition.